Hey guys, I just want to give you an update on what's going on with me. Um, last time when I made a video, I said that I had to have the HSG test done despite what my doctor thought. Um, he didn't think it needed to be done quite yet, um, but we had to have it done anyway. So Tuesday last week, I got a call from their office and they told me that I was going to have to come in for a physical. So I came in for the physical, or I went in for the physical, and um, it was a complete waste of my time and my doctor's time. It was he had to just like check my legs, check my stomach, make sure there was no pain anywhere, and then he took my vitals. Um, and then I was sent on my way home. Um, so uh, that afternoon, my nurse at the specialist office, she called back and let me know when my appointment was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be until like Monday or Tuesday this week, but um, it ended up being last Friday. And um, she told me that the surgery center where I was going to have it done, they would call me and give me all the rest of the details um, before Friday sometime. So um, the surgery center did call me on Thursday. And they, what did they do? They told me that I couldn't eat anything after 6.45 on Friday. So um, I woke up at 6 on Friday and ate something because I knew I was going to be so hungry if I didn't. Um, so I ate and then I just went on with my day like normal until 9.30 when I picked up my husband from work and then we drove over to um, the surgery center. And when we got there, I filled out some paperwork um, and then we just waited in this waiting room. Um, and like 15 minutes later, a nurse called me back and had me go, um, go into this like patient waiting area and they took my vitals and had me change into a gown, and then I just sat there for like 25 minutes um, and waited, and I was so nervous. I prayed for a while, and then I just sat there, and I was trying to think of people to text because I just I needed somebody to talk to. Um, so I sat there, and I was just, I was stressing out. I had watched some videos, and some people said it wasn't bad at all. Um, and then others said that it was terrible and they would never want to have it done again. And who wants to have it done? But, um, but yeah, so I wasn't sure what to expect. So I was just, I was really nervous. I was so nervous. I thought I was going to throw up. Like I've never been that nervous where I thought I was going to throw up, but I really thought I was going to throw up. Um, so I sat there for a while and then the, um, doctor came in and I had never met him before. So he introduced himself to me. Um, it was the OBGYN that my specialist had recommended because my OBGYN was going to be too busy to do the procedure. So, and my specialist didn't have privileges um, at the hospitals or the surgery center that my insurance allowed. So I went with the OBGYN that my specialist recommended. I'm very glad I did. He was so nice. Um, he explained everything that was going to happen. Um, and then after that, he left the room to go get ready. And I just sat there and waited a little bit longer. And then um, the nurse, a nurse came in and got me. And she was very nice also. Um, she came and got me and explained again kind of what was going to happen. And then brought me to this procedure room where I laid down on this table. And it was a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be because all the videos I had watched, the girls said that the table that they laid on was like rock hard. And the stirrups they had to put their legs in, they just... Their legs just like dangled, and that wasn't how it was at all. Um, the the bed I, or the table I had to lay on was like padded, and it was um, the stirrups were also padded. Um, they had like from your knee down, you could just like rest your leg. It was like a leg rest, um, so that wasn't too bad. And then um, once she got me all ready on the table, she like she heightened the table a little bit. Um, so that I guess the x-ray was closer and then she placed it like over my abdomen. Um, and then I just waited a little bit longer because the doctor was trying to find a lead vest that would fit him. He couldn't find one that fit him, I guess. So, um, once he came in the room, he just kind of told me again what was going to happen. So I really knew what was going to happen. Um, and then he put the speculum in and... Obviously, that's not super comfortable, but that wasn't bad. Um, and from there, he really didn't tell me what he was doing as he did it. Um, he didn't tell me when he put the catheter in. 
Um, and that kind of pinched a little bit, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Um, and after he did that, yeah, he didn't tell me what was happening. He didn't tell me when he was blowing up the balloon. He didn't tell me when he was inserting the dye, but I knew when the dye was going in because um, they had the screen up so you could see everything that was going on, but I really didn't want to watch that. I was really nervous. I was just trying to calm myself down. Um, so once the dye started going in, it felt pretty bad. It um, felt like a cramp only it was like 10 times worse. It was really bad. Um, and it just, it like started and then it just kept getting worse and you weren't sure when it was going to like taper off. Um, but that only lasted two minutes. And I thought I was going to cry, but it, yeah, it only lasted two minutes. And so I guess it really wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad as I thought. So, um, after, well, once he got the dye in, um, he had me shift to my left side a little bit so it would flow into one of my tubes. And then once it did, he had me shift back to the middle. And that was really, it felt really weird because obviously I had a speculum inside me and dye. And it was just, it was really, it felt really weird. Um, but other than that, that was, it just was, it was pretty quick. Um, and once he was done, he, told me that everything looked great. Um, he told me they would you know, get the pictures sent over to insurance and the results sent over insurance, sent over to my doctor, um, the specialist. So after he left the room, the nurse had me scoot back on the table and I just like rested for a minute. And um, then she had me get into a wheelchair. Um, they wheeled me back to my room. There was like a TMI alert. There was a pad on the wheelchair because they'd said that you would have um, discharge, some discharge from just from the dye. Um, so are they, and you might have some spotting, they said, for the dye. So, um, they wheeled me back to my room and then they let my husband come back and they had me sit there and wait for a little bit and they took my vitals again. And then the doctor came in and just retold us that everything looked fine, um, and just kind of said bye to us. And then um, the nurse came in and let me get dressed. And then once I was dressed, they gave me instructions just for going home. Um, they said I could take Motrin if I had like cramping or if I had um, problems. Like my, my back might hurt, they said. And then I had, um, they just said that you could have spotting during the day. And then if anything abnormal happened, just to call them. So um, when I left, I did take some Motrin because my back was pretty sore, um, but I really didn't have much spotting. I didn't have much discharge. Um, it wasn't terrible. So um, when I got home, I just kind of took it easy for a little bit, and my doctor ended up calling at, I don't know, like 2 in the afternoon and said that they had already got the... Um, they had already got the results from my test and that they were going to get it sent over to insurance. Um, so I was really happy with the communication um, between the two doctors that day. Um, there's so many things that I can think about and not be thankful for, you know, and obviously it's not right to not, not be thankful, but um, there's so many things that can make me sad. And I just, I've learned that I have to, find what, find things to be thankful for, because there's always things to be thankful for. And Friday, I was so thankful for my doctor and for the doctor that did the procedure and the communication between them and just how kind they were to me. Um, but anyhow, so we are hoping to get that sent into insurance. And then next month, we will be doing a round of another round of round of clomid with an IUI. Um, and that my nurse told me to call on the first day of my cycle. And if my next cycle hasn't started by October 7th, then I'm supposed to call and we'll jumpstart it with Provera or whatever they decide to do. So um, I am excited for October and I'm not going to wish away my September though. Um, we're just going to enjoy ourselves and have some fun. Um, I think I will do another video in the next week or so. We'll see. 
Um, I'm reading a couple books and I probably will update you on those and maybe do a little review on those. Um, so other than that, I don't think there's anything else to update on right now. I will talk to you later. Bye.